the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi, and welcome back to the introduction to our course. This is module three, video one, and we are going to be talking about operations in the console and how to assign variables. And we will be doing this in our studio. So I will be transitioning over to that now. Now we are in our studio. And the first thing that is I'm going to set up a new project so that all of my files for this introduction to our course can be found in one place. It makes it very nice and easy for organization rather than have them spread out. This becomes extremely useful when you're working with data and you have data files that end up getting saved in other places if you don't have a strict project that you're working in. I always come up here to the top and I'm going to click on new project. And then I'm going to go to new directory. I'm going to say new project the name of the directory that I would like it to be in. I'm going to call it introduction to R and then you can choose where you would like to save it by clicking browse and then you can go ahead and click create project. Now that I'm in a project, this is what I'm going to use for the remainder of the course. I'm going to create everything within this our project folder basically creates a folder where everything can be filed and kept neatly. So I'm going to keep it all in here. Once we start working with scripts, which I'll show you a little bit today, that script will be saved into this project folder so that we know exactly where it is. And next time when we come into R, we'll just have to open this project and our script will be right there waiting for us, ready to go. Now we're going to perform basic calculations in the console. So if you see over here on the left side, we have the greater than sign and then a flashing cursor. This is our console and we can perform basic math operations right here in the console for us. If I would like to do seven plus eight, I can do that here. In order to run that line, all I have to do is hit enter and I'll get 15. I can also do any of our other math operations. So I can do eight times nine. I can do nine divided by three and I can do nine minus six. I can also do exponents as well by using two asterisks instead of just one for the multiplication. So I'm going to do three squared and I'll get nine there. Now, what if I would like to save a calculation for later? So instead of having to type it all out eight times nine every single time, I can just save it into a variable and I can type that variable over again instead of having to type out eight times nine. It makes your code simpler, easier to read, and it also makes it easier for you to type. So you don't have to type so many times, especially when these calculations become rather large or if you are putting in lots of extra variables into a function or something like that. Instead of having to write out the entire huge function, you can just save it into a variable and run that variable and it runs the entire function exactly the way you want it to. That is why assigning variables are really nice and that's why we'll look into assigning variables here next. Now, this creates an R script. You hit that green plus in the top left and you click R script. You can also do file and say um, new file and R script there as well. Right off the back, it says untitled one. I'm going to go ahead and save this so that I know exactly what my R script is called. And it's going to automatically pull up my introduction to R project folder so that when I save it, it goes right into here and it'll show up here as being named here. And it'll also show up down here as part of our files. Then I am going to assign a variable now. If you remember from the guide to our studio video that was done during section two, you can type in here and then in order to run that line, instead of just hitting enter, which will create more lines, I will need to hold control and hit enter as well to actually run that line. Or I can hit the run button up here in the top right and that'll do the same thing. Got seven plus eight, 15, seven plus eight is 15. Now, if I want to save seven plus eight as a variable, I need to assign it to a variable. The way to do that in R is by using an arrow. Now in many programming languages, the arrow is an equal sign instead. Nowadays in R, you can use the equal sign, 
to assign a variable. However, it is basic convention for R to use the arrow because historically you can only use the arrow in R. You cannot use the equal sign to assign variables. And this was because they didn't want to confuse the equal sign for assigning variables versus the equal sign within a function call. And we'll talk about that later. But nowadays you can use either. However, if you're going online looking for answers to any questions that you have in R, you're going to see people use the arrow in order to assign variables, not the equal sign. I'm going to save this as a variable and the name of my variable is going to be 15. And you can name this variable whatever you would like. It doesn't matter. R is just going to know that it is the number 15 and then it's going to use it as a number 15. However, good coding style is to use a variable name that actually describes what it is so that the next time you are reading your code or somebody else is reading your code looking to add on or modify, you don't have to wonder what that variable even means. It would also be extremely confusing if instead of saying 15, you had typed here 14. Anybody who is looking at your code trying to read it wondering why you said that 7 plus 8 was 14 when obviously that is not the case. So always make sure your variables are named correctly in order for you to read it again later. In order to run that line, I will go ahead and hold control and press the enter key. That'll give me 15 over on the right side. If you see over here in the environment, we've got our variable 15 and the number of its value there which makes it very easy for you if you have a bunch of variables and you're way down in your code, like after 200 lines and you're wondering what that variable even is, you can look up here into the global environment and see that it is 15. I can also assign variables many different data types, not just numbers. We'll talk about what a data type is in the next video, but for now, I can also save things like strings or words as variables as well. So if I wanted to save Let's say apple, I can assign the character string apple there. I can hit control enter and get apple over here. And it'll show me that apple, the value of it is apple in quotation marks. So anything in quotation marks, that's going to be a character. If I would like to perform an operation with this variable up here, I can just type in here 15 and I can multiply it by, let's say nine. I want you to think about before I go ahead and execute this line, whether you think this will show up over here in our global environment. You can pause the video if you would like and think about it. However, I'm going to go ahead and run it here. You'll see that it gets 135 and yet it does not show up in our global environment. The reason why is because we did not save this or assign it to a variable. Now, if I wanted to, I could save it here. I will save this as product because this is the product of 15 times nine here. If I run this line, product will show up over here on the right side in our global environment as 135. So that is how you perform calculations in the console and also how you assign values to a variable. I look forward to seeing you next time where we talk about all the different types of data types that are in R. See you next time. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.